Hey, you guys. Okay, so this is the actual wool um, video that you guys will be using to complete your assignment that is in Google Classroom. So we're going to start reading a new novel. And the irony is um, there are so many similarities um, that we are currently facing, which coincide with what we're going to be reading about uh, with Fahrenheit 451. Okay, so this, again, is just your introduction to um, what we're going to be reading. I'm just going to talk about a few things, and this is going to help you to complete your assignment. Okie dokie. And let's go. All righty. So, agree or disagree, and you're going to see the same um, statements on your actual handout and I just want you to go through and I want you to just answer it. Now remember, when you are answering something for me, you're stating your claim and your position. When you explain it to me, remember your explanation has to be supported with evidence. Your evidence could be examples to support your statement. For example, um, we have agree or disagree. Books reading education can lead or leads to power. So if you say, yes, I agree that books reading and education and or education leads to power. I need for you to provide me an example. Example, it could be a personal statement. For example, I read uh, this particular book. It helped me to do A, B, and C, and this provided me with, with whatever. Um, but I want you also to press past making everything personal. Do you have facts that without education, this person or um, this particular company may not have power? I want you to think beyond the word education. Go beyond Education is, oh, education means I go to school. Remember, words are polysemous. They have multiple meanings. Word have, words have different connotations. So you need to know the denotation. You need the connotation of these words. And you also need to know uh, how this word is being used in this particular context. That also has to do with the word power. Okay. Same thing here. Do you agree or disagree? The government should make its citizens aware of absolutely everything that they are doing, planning, or discussing. Do you agree with this? Yes or no? And if you do, please explain your position. Again, I need some evidence. Give me some facts. Give me some statistics. Uh, give me some examples, things that I cannot disagree with, okay? I need strong evidence. Agree or disagree? Uh, there are times when too much knowledge is harmful and dangerous. Same thing. Explain your position. Ignorance is bliss. If you don't know what the word bliss means, then that means I need for you to do what? Of course, look it up. Okay. And again, explain your position. Please use correct grammar when you are explaining your position. Agree or disagree? Citizens should obey their government. Again, this is a meaty one. So you're going to have to think about what does the word obey mean? And if you obey the government, you know, then what? Think about examples of history and history where citizens obeyed their governments and things worked out wonderfully. What about now? Our government is asking us to stay in um, during the lockdown. Should we do this? Yes or no? And why or why not? And how does this help or how does this hurt society? These, are, This is the way that I want you to think, okay? So we're going to talk about two different genres of literature, two different types of literature. We have the utopian and we have the dystopian. Utopian and dystopian. Utopian is literature that, that describes an imaginary ideal world. When we're talking about ideal, we're talking about a world that is perfect. Uh, just everything is peaceful. Everything smells like roses. You know, one of those type worlds. That's what we're talking about. We're talking about ideal. It is coined by Thomas More. Uh, 
Utopian is actually a pun on the Greek word utopia or utopia, which means a good place, or utopia, which means no place. Excuse me, I don't mean to be drinking in your ear, but hey, y'all know I drink my water in class, don't you? <laughs> Anyway, so dystopian literature. Dystopian is the opposite of utopian. It is literature that describes an imaginary world that is highly unpleasant. Think about the Odyssey and remember when uh, Odysseus, when he went to Hades, I mean, you know, or um, the land of the dead, that world was could be very unpleasant, right? Okay, so it comes from the Greek term, which means bad place. Fahrenheit 451 is a dystopian novel. So now that you know that this novel is a dystopian novel, uh, what do you expect to read about, right? So you should expect to read about some unpleasant treats. And then if you look at the title, Fahrenheit 451, what Fahrenheit has to do with what? Heat. All righty. Very good. So let's talk about settings and the historical context. Fahrenheit 451 was written in 19 or, or published in 1953. Um, during this time, America and the Soviet Union had basically uh, detonated like the hydrogen bomb. So during this time in 1953, like America was at a fragile place, kind of like where we are today, very fragile. So, you know, we had the nuclear age, we had the McCarthyism, technology was on a rise, you know, television like every family at this point had one television or they were trying to uh, obtain one television in at home. And so, you know, um, this was a changing point in America. So now you got the television, which is technology, and people are now getting away from newspapers and magazines and other forms of mass media. Then we just had the recent ending of World War II. Like I said, the atomic bomb, the Cold War. And these are some things that I'm going to ask you about. Um, actually, these are our extra points. So I'm going to ask you at this point, to take the initiative and to go and find some other events during the 1950 that you think uh, that could influence the story's plot. Now, I just talked about a few. And if you followed the Instagram, you saw that I talked about censorship. So you should have an idea of where I'm going, okay? So, America in the 1950s. Again, like I said, this is when Fahrenheit 451 was written. We had a boom in economy. Opportunities was everywhere. Disposable income was everywhere. 60% of Americans, they were considered middle class. 60% of Americans were considered middle class. And this was the dream where people had, uh, uh, what is the phrase? Uh, one, a home, a nice home with one car in every garage. This is where uh, America was going. It was very suburban, you know. Um, we had the electronics industry. They became the fifth largest industry post-war because during the war is where a lot of the technology um was being used like a lot of the technology that we have today like the tracking and the gps a lot of these things were things that were used during um the war or military these were military concepts that they scaled down so that we could use them civilians can use them oh the air of baby boom so if you have a grand well that may be your great grandmother but if you have a relative that is 
like 65, 70, they're considered a baby boomer. Uh, this is where we had a whole lot of babies, you know, uh, being born. We may have a baby boom um, during, you know, in the year of 2020, 2021, because of us being quarantined or the lockdown, you know. Hey, you, we may have, some of you all may have some more siblings. Just joking. All right. And again, after the war, everything returned to uh, a stable home life. Television, like I said, it was popular and it was also uh, controversial. Again, this is a time that people had a television in the homes. And I like a lot of the shows that were shown during the 1950s, stuff like Leave it to Beaver. Uh, things like I Love Lucy, My Favorite Dad. I know you guys like Miss Bun. What are you talking about? Hey, go ahead, and I want you to just Google some of this stuff and ask your parents um, about shows like I Love Lucy, Leave It to Beaver, My Favorite Dad. Uh, those things. It showed. It represented a white suburban middle class family. Again, your mom was at home, dad had a job, the kids were happy, you really didn't have any problems. Everything was kind of whimsical. Uh mom and dad, they they did not kiss. You know, during this time you couldn't kiss, you couldn't touch each other. Uh mom and dad had separate rooms. It was things of that nature. And because TV very much so had a very heavy influence on the viewers, which was American. And I, I tell you all the time, one of the reasons why I wanted to go to college is because, hey, I grew up seeing a different world where kids looked like me went to college. Okay, so in the futuristic world of Fahrenheit 451, everything is fireproof. When I say everything, everything. And then in the 1950s, there was a use of asbestos. Uh, it's basically a mixture of minerals that make things non-combustible. Here's the irony. Now, asbestos, uh, caught, we found out that it cost, or caused a lot of people to get sick. All right. And a couple of buildings that were built you know, during the 1950s and before the 1950s, they use expesto. They have to basically uh, remove that and, and, and redo the building. What is censorship and why are books banned? So I'm going to pause right here. I'm going to give you a minute to go ahead and read over this and I'm going to come back. Okay, so you guys had an opportunity to read over this at your leisure, and I hope you added these words to your notebook. So we see the word censor here twice. We see it being used once as a verb, once as a noun, and we know that censor is an official who basically examines material that's about to be released, such as movies and, excuse me, books and things of that nature. Censor is also a verb. It is action. It's when we examine a book, a movie, and it's officially or it's suppressed unacceptable parts of it. Okay? So it's, we're going to look at something and then we're going to suppress the parts that we deem unacceptable. Restrictions. We know that restriction is when a book is kept from a certain audience based on the objective objections of people or groups banned banned is when a book is completely removed from an institution because of the objections of a person or group there are certain books that have been banned um and now they're the ban has been lifted and this is one of the books that have been banned okay so this is an example of what banned looks like now when we go to social media or Facebook. Again, here are some examples of book burning. I'm going to link a video that I want you all to watch so that you can hear uh, from the author itself. 
And then I want you to fill out your sheet. Have a good day. Bye-bye.